Daily B, 58. Beautiful day. Beautiful backyard. Interesting thing to talk about. What are we going to talk about today? Hey, this is Brian from brianwright732.com and fitin.com, P-H-I-T-I-N.com. So here's the deal. I uh, went to dinner with my wife last night and we sat down and started to talk and you know, what was supposed to be a short dinner ended up turning into like three hours of sitting back, killing a bottle of wine and just talking about a lot of things. And one of the main things we started getting into was going deep on a topic instead of wide. And uh, I had a conversation the day before with a friend of mine about his business and we were just talking about things and ways that he can augment his business and whatnot. And we had gotten into that conversation as well. And, uh, you know, it's funny, everything we do applies somewhere else. So for me, a lot of times, because martial arts and fitness tends to be the majority of my life in terms of my professional life, what I've done, I, I do a lot of crossing over between my experiences there and my experiences everywhere else. But I'm also a fine artist, and I have experiences there that can cross over to business as well, and then things in business that can cross over to art, can cross over to martial arts, whatever. Everything, you know, is us. It's experience. It is what it is. So... The going deep versus wide thing. So I was a uh, been a fine artist my whole life. I was primarily been primarily a painter. And one of the main criticisms people have had for me is that when you look at my work, you can kind of tell it's my work, but I don't go very deep into subject matter. So I do there's a lot of variety in what I do. So I'll do two or three pieces around something, and then go into a complete different direction, whatever. So there's a continuity in terms of my style because my you know. I tend to, my brush strokes are a certain way, my colors are a certain thing, whatever. But in terms of subject matter, technique, whatever, it changes uh, dramatically over time. So uh, someone was like, you know, why don't you spend a little bit more time on one way and really get into it? And I challenged myself in the last two groupings of work I did. I, I, I stuck with both of them for about two years apiece and it forced me to really get into stuff and I found out a lot more about myself and my craft and it made me think and it forced me to be creative so in a lot of ways you would think creativity comes from the freedom to express a million and one different ways uh, but the reality of it is the more disciplined you are and the deeper that you go the more creative you become because if you become uh, minimal with your subject matter you have to get creative in your presentation so that you're not just doing the same thing. So I started looking at one concept from every angle possible and then having to express that in different ways. So you have a continuity in there, but you have you know an extreme level of creativity as well. So going back to the business side of it, in particular, I was sitting there talking with a friend of mine and we were talking about uh, his business again, and then he has a uh, a certain thing that he does well and then I was like you know let's get deep into that and let's skim away the rest of the stuff that's you know not necessarily wasting your time but it's distracting you from the thing you do best and so we focused on what he did best and then we got really into it in terms of you know creating a culture around the concept and by the time we were done we we had a pretty good idea that that'll be a decent income maker for her. it's a time streamliner it's a thing that he can use to develop relationships with other people in this community on a business to business relationship uh, he can service his existing customers better it, w it was just very interesting that when you stick with one topic long enough and you're figuring out how can you service people better through that you know it just snowballs and starts to develop you know, and then I was talking with my wife and we we're doing the, the, the same conversation but um, all of this kind of goes back to there's uh, a concept that I, I heard again it's a paraphrase because I don't even re I don't remember exactly where I heard it from if it was a person if I read it or whatever but it was it was a statement connected with Zen and the concept was if you can do one thing well you now have the ability to do everything well and that's really the continuity part that I'm talking about here is that if you have the ability to go deep somewhere and then you create the you know if you get into the creative mindset of looking at something from all different angles and learning how to fully communicate in a million different ways, you know, you can apply that to pretty much anything you're doing to get the 360 view of it and to really come up with all the diverse ways that you can communicate whatever it is that you're trying to do. So it doesn't matter what you teach or where you teach it or what you're doing. We all have the same process. So instead of going wide, which is the easy answer, wide's the quick fix. So wide is 
you know, I'm going to change the nature of my business to fit the guy who walks through my door because I'm thinking in a cash poor mentality. So I'll do whatever I have to do to get money from somebody, but I'm not really thinking about, is this the proper person for what it is that I'm offering? Am I going to be able to fully service them? Am I going to be able to go deep into helping them achieve something or am I just trying to get money out of them now and then I'm modifying how I do business which is watering down my product for the rest of my student base so I've captured one guy for short-term money but am I going to lose long-term money over it whatever so you know you can't reshuffle the deck and redefine yourself based on who walks through your door you know you have to have a very specific understanding of who you are and what you do and you've got to go as deep as you possibly can on that concept so that you know specifically what your target audience is, what's your benefit to them, what is every question you could possibly answer for that community. And then you go deep on that and then you just focus on that and then you ignore the rest of it and you don't get distracted when someone from outside of your target range comes through and they present an opportunity to make money. but. You recognize the fact that short-term money, it's getting in the way of your long-term client and you just start acting more appropriately. So you don't act desperate, you act confident within your strength. And again, you know, focusing on your strengths and developing them is way better than focusing on your weakness. Because if you focus on your weakness, your strength's going to diminish and then you're trying to fix something that you don't necessarily have to fix. You don't have to be everything to everyone. You have to be the right person for the right person. You know, you have to find a person that fits into your service model. It's as simple as that. What do you do? Like if you sell car parts, you're not going to go after, you know, uh, food businesses. You know, if you sell hamburgers, you're not going to go and try and put a tire on a guy's car. Like you do what it is you do and you do it to the best of your ability. That's just the nature of things and how it works. So go deep so that you can really find the creative solutions that exist inside you for the problems that you're dealing with for your customer base. It's as simple as that. All right, go deep, don't go wide. Wide's easy, deep is hard, but deep is worth it.